Hello, my name is Dean Cartover. Welcome to The Current Buzz. Today we have John Boswell. I've known John Boswell for how many years? We were just talking earlier. At least 10. At least 10, over 10. Uh, John Boswell, I'm going to have to read this uh, uh, because uh, he's, uh, he's at the University of Mass, Lowell, and he's uh, Associate Athletic Director for Marketing and Promotions. And basically we're going to talk about uh, uh, the men's ice hockey team. Is there ever going to be a women's ice hockey team? At the moment, I would say probably not. Probably not. Okay. There's no talk about it. No. So it would it would throw a lot of things into imbalance when it comes to Title IX. Um, in okay. Terms of oh, the, I the see. Gender Balancing of yeah. Title IX. Explain Title IX to some people who may not know what Title IX. Yeah. So IX. it's actually the 50th anniversary of Title IX this year, which is it, it's a historic moment. I in, think it's great. I think Title IX was great. It was, and I mean, it, it, large scale, it's education. It's it's providing equal opportunity to education, yeah. but really it has impacted athletics. Greatly, yeah. Um, so there has to be equal opportunity for male and female student athletes to participate in collegiate athletics, right. high school athletics, etc. Um, UMass Lowell is a little bit different in the structure that there's more um, male students enrolled than female students. Oh, is so that our, right? our balance has to match what I the see. campus population is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. I get it. Um, hockey team uh, started out pretty good. Um, we the ranked fifteenth at this moment. Yeah. Correct. I won't tell you what, what day or what week it was. <laughs> and hopefully the, this is nationally ranked. UMass Lowell is nationally ranked 15th in the country. There is a national ranking like football. There is a national ranking for, for hockey. Okay, so head coach is Norm Bazin. How, he's been there quite a few years, almost yes. eight or ten years. Oh, no longer. So Norm's first season was 2010, I believe. So Okay. Uh, you know, she's closing on 12, 13. So he's going to stay? Yeah, Nor I mean, Norm is a, is a UMass Lowell alum. Um, you know, there's been obviously a lot of, a great deal of interest in Norm mm -hmm. from time to time when coaching opportunities come open yeah. because of what he does at Lowell. Um, and he has a great reputation both in the college hockey world and the professional hockey world. And that's why you can bring in people from all over the world. Correct. You know, I used to go to the games, I had season tickets to the hockey, UMass Lowell hockey. And what I would see is mostly Canadian players, 25, 30% American players, and that was it. Now I'm seeing players from, uh, uh, from Sweden, Latvia, uh, Germany. Yep. You have a couple from Germany. Yep. And I was reading their bios and was really interested in what they were saying. I came to, to UMass Law for the program, mm -hmm. the hockey program, because it has a good reputation. Correct. That's what the most of the buyers were saying, and because of the education. Yeah, it's a, it's a dual purpose, right? right? You know, people want to come because of hockey, and hockey opens doors, but they're also here for the education, to leave with a degree. Right. In many cases, they're leaving with an advanced degree because of the, the way they can take classes and, 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 you know, the eligibility years. All the students that were enrolled during COVID got an extra year of eligibility if they wanted it. So we have a lot of students who've, who are leaving with MBAs because they're able to complete that in four years or in five years now. So that enhances them in regards to the National Hockey League, in regards to possibility if they play five years. And that also, uh, uh, they could break records by having that fifth year, can't they? I oh, mean, correct, yeah. I mean, I think we see, we've seen records fall for most games played, most games played at home, most games started, points, records. Those are all starting to fall a little bit because right. you're getting that extra year. Right. Um, but it also provides leadership. You know, a lot, of the, a lot of these programs that you see in the top rankings, the Boston Colleges and BU's of the world, they rarely have players that make it to graduation because they're, they're top blue chip NHL prospects who are going to play one, right. two years and then depart. Well, we recruit a different student athlete at UMass. So our players are top notch players, but they're also there to play four years, to play five years. So we have a leadership element. That Usually a lot of they don't do, have. but some of them jump. Oh, correct. Well, yeah. what's the reason for them jumping so early? I think you told me. A lot of it's money ba financial based, right? Oh, you know, okay. you, you're going to get a contract. So just this past summer, Andre Lee, uh, was, he's an L.A. Kings draft pick. He played his junior season and he signed after the season. He could have come back and played another year, um, but he signed. And a l largely that's because the NHL team will really push for those players to sign. If a player is drafted but doesn't sign after three years, after three years, when okay. he makes it that's to year four, it he becomes a free agent and can sign oh. anywhere. Oh, okay. So the teams definitely put pressure on their players to sign. Uh, we do have a draft pick on the roster now, um, Ben Ben Meehan, a Weymouth kid. His father played for the River Hawks. Uh, he's also an LA Kings draft pick, and this is his junior year, so this could be Ben's last year with uh, with the River Hawks as well. I see. So, 
That's why they jump in their junior year, even though they do they have good numbers and so forth, and, and probably do very well in their senior year. Okay. So they jump after their junior year because then they would become free agents. And you don't know what might happen to them. They may get injured or yep. something to that effect. Correct. And the teams, the teams could lose their rights. So the team really wants them to sign. They've invested three, four years in a, in a, in a student athlete. How do they invest? But by what? By giving so they'll invite players to their development camps in the, in the summer. In the summer, I see. So they get to see them. They get to see them on a training regimen. I see. They, so they, they are invested in, the, in these student athletes. Yeah, I see, I see, I see. So, oh, that's interesting. Okay, so um, UMass Lowell is a member of Hockey East, one of the best leagues. There are probably five or six leagues, right? Correct, yeah. And uh, it's considered one of the best. Correct, is yeah. I mean, correct? It's, it's taught from top to bottom. Anybody can win on any given night. The yeah, that's The parity true. is really strong. Yeah, that's interesting because when you play black to back to back games, let's say you play a Friday night game and you yep. play a Saturday game, usually you're going to win one. One of them. Right. It's very rare that you win two. Correct. So, I mean, splits are really important in Hockey East. You know, you have to kind of identify, all right, we really need to take both of these games this weekend. But when we play two against, say, Northeastern, yes, you want to win two, mm -hmm. but at minimum you got to come out with a split. Okay. And that helps keep you in the top half of those Hockey East standings. Yeah, um, we, we have a goalie from Alaska, uh, uh, Anchorage, right? Uh, uh, team and it's in its fifth year. Is that what the story Correct. is? So, so the transfer portal um, has yeah, kind of changed we're gonna, how college we're hockey. We're going to talk operates. about the friends. I wanted to talk about the the, the, the transfer portal. Yeah. So, but go ahead. Yeah. Explain, so Gu Gustav Davis Griggles, we call him Goose. Yeah. He's our starting goalie. He transferred from Alaska Anchorage, uh, and he had he's had really good experience. Um, you know, they're not. They didn't have the success that maybe the Riverhawks have had, so he's faced a lot of shots. Um, you know, he's been in a lot of odd man situations, playing the penalty kill. Um, oh, and, you know, the, the coach has a – Coach Bayzen loves to see strong goaltending. You know, that's really the foundation yeah, of our team. Exactly. You know, from Connor Hellebuck to Tyler Wall, mm -hmm. Owen Savory last season. Um, so we have two really good goaltenders, or three really good goaltenders that, on the roster between Goose, uh, Henry Welsh, and Edvard Nordland. Um, so they'll all split time. They'll all see some action and uh, – you know, it's kind of great to have that competition to see who comes out on top. Mm -hmm. um, but I think people are excited by Greg Griggles. He put up a shutout in his first game, only the second goalie in uh, program history to do that in their first start with the Riverhawks. Oh, oh okay. Uh, so he was Hockey East goaltender of the week to but start. But they were playing game. St. Lawrence. St. Lawrence, you know, yeah. it's, it, there's parody in college hockey. Yeah. You know, um, Alaska Anchorage, where he came from, you know, they shut out, or they beat Western Michigan, uh, who, was a, who was a tournament team last year. So. Anyone can, anything no, can no, happen. I mean, any even the Arizona State has a, has a team, or Arizona. Yeah, they're very good. Yeah, and they're good. I was really yeah. surprised last year you guys played them, and you won one and lost one, yeah. and it was kind of like Arizona State. They just started a program. Yeah, so you, they have a lot of resources, obviously, that they can put behind the program. And, and the recruiting pitch when you're at Arizona State, and you know, you come to Lowell, and here's Lowell. It's cold. Here's what it's going to be like all winter. Yeah. Here's Arizona State. Yeah, Here's what exactly. you're going to have. That's a yeah. unique, uh, unique yeah, approach. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I, I agree with <laughs> you, you know. And you're not too far from California. No. <laughs> you get to go to the ocean. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so the portal. Explain the portal, what's happening. It, I hear about it in football, and it's kind of like things have changed now, haven't they, because of the portal? Correct. And so explain the portal to the... Yeah, to so the, college athletics has basically now become almost free agency. Um, okay. You know, so in the past, prior to the changes, if you wanted to transfer schools, you had to sit out a year before you were eligible for another year. No kidding. So you know, if you're trying to get through school in four years, that's, yeah. that's going to throw a major hindrance. Yeah, yeah. Now you can transfer without penalty. So you can transfer and be immediately eligible at your new institution. So the transfer portal, a lot of student athletes will put their name in the portal, and then it reopens their recruiting. Coaches can start to contact them. And a lot of coaching staffs have one person specifically that is responsible for the transfer portal. They're no ready. kidding. They're ready for a right? name to hit that, and you're immediately cutting film on those student athletes, trying to figure out are they a fit for your program? Can they make your program better? Do they do they fit academically? Um, and the rules have changed, so now a lot of these student athletes, because of the COVID situation, have an extra year of eligibility. So now it was you know what was once four years and you're done with NCAA eligibility is now five years. So you can get an undergrad degree, play four years at a college put your name in the portal, and then have an extra year to play someplace else. And then else. get a graduate degree? Correct. 
So you're seeing a lot of fifth-year transfers come into the portal so they can pl play that last year. You know. So how does Norm Bates and the coach of UMass Lowell uh, look at the portal? I mean, I think Coach Bazen really appro approaches the portal as an opportunity to really improve the team. Uh, this year we have three transfer players that came from the transfer portal. Who are they? Do you know Yeah, so Gustav Griggles. Gustav's a goalie. Uh, goalie came from Alaska. Uh, his teammate, Philip Forna Svensson, came from Alaska. Uh, he was their leading scorer. And wow. Jake, and Jake Stella, a forward, came from uh, AIC, American International, which has been a tournament team as well mm -hmm. um, and was a strong player on that team. So they're really exciting when you can add that caliber of a player. Um, and they fit the locker room. Um, you know, I think our captain, John McDonald, said these guys come in and it feels like they've been here for four years. Oh, wow. Um, so they fit the mold, they fit the culture, and that's very important when you're recruiting. Huh. That's interesting. The portal is more important than the freshman coming in. It is. Because you don't really know what a freshman's going to do. Right. Freshmen are kind of lottery tickets. Yeah. Um, so you, but I, it, both are important. They're equally important. Yeah, no, no. So, it's the, you know, we had, 12, yeah, we had 12 first-year players in the roster this year. Twelve. Three are tr three are from the transfer portal, and nine are first year freshman players. So we have a pair of brothers. Well, you have to balance that off because in the portal, uh, you know what you're getting. You have to balance it between forwards, defensemen, yep, goalie, and goalie. Yeah, and I mean, I think you look at our roster on opening night. Um, we started and skated four freshmen. So of the of the nine, four were in the opening night. That's night. unusual, isn't it? So, uh, it depends. It, yeah. it creates a lot of competition, is what it does. Yeah. So. I think you'll see a lot of juggling of the lines, guys skating in and out, particularly in some of the, you know, the top or the, the bottom defensive pairing, the fourth line, third line. You'll see a lot of those players interchangeable, and that's because you always have to have people ready and you always have to have people engaged. And even if you're not in the lineup, you're, you have to be a key member of the team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, how many players can they dress? Is there a number they so, can dress? So we have a roster of 30. Um, okay. I think we're at 29 on the roster, and, okay. and we'll dress... Um, 22 players because we get an extra defenseman. I see. Okay. But they they practice too. And, yep. Oh, every, yeah. So it's it's competition um, week to week, game to game. Yeah. Do you give scholarships out? Yes. So um, how many scholarships do you know? So it varies. It's it's not. We have a certain number, and then we kind of parse the coaching staff parses them out. So some people are on full scholarship, some people are on 25% scholarship. And it varies year to year. So a 25% scholarship person might be 50 next year. I see. I see. Um, so it's a, it's a combination of... And, 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 and it, it's also about need, right? It's about need. It's yeah. about the, the skill level. But it's also academically based um, because there's academic scholarships that can be awarded as well. So how are you doing? How are they doing in academics in regards to... Uh, yeah, so it's, it's, it's always exciting when you talk about academics. And, and I think Coach Bazen really It's really important. It. it is. To me. To you, to them, yeah. to, to really everybody. Because not everybody goes on and plays professional hockey. Um, yeah. So our hockey team has had the highest GPA amongst all UMass Lowell Athletic no programs for the last, I think, 16 semesters. Wow. Um, which is incredible. You know, yeah. it's not like they're all in, you know, doing general studies. Yeah. We have engineering majors. We have finance, finance majors. Business. We have, so, so you have across the, the gamut of, of majors on campus. There's nowhere to hide. UMass Lowell is a very strong academic school. Yeah, it is. So there's no, you know, you there's no athlete kind of major that everybody gravitates towards. You have to be a strong athlete to be at U, or a strong student to be at UMass Lowell. In the hockey team, really. And they know it coming they in. They, they know that they're yep. going to get a good degree. Correct, and it's not again not just an undergraduate degree, but in many cases an MBA or, or an advanced degree. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. Uh, while we're talking hockey, you're playing in the Belfast Northern Island. Yeah, so this thing. What's that about? So it's that we actually played in the inaugural tournament five years ago. Okay. And uh, we're sch scheduled to go back for Thanksgiving this year. We play uh, UMass Amherst, and then we're also going to play either Brown or um, or Dartmouth or Quinnipiac. Quinnipiac, right? yeah, they, so, Quinnipiac has a good team. They've sure. always had a good team. For sure. So it's an exciting time. It's a it's a great team. No, this one trip. says Dartmouth. You yes, Dartmouth, Brown, not yeah, Brown. Yeah, Brown, so, yeah. Um, it's a great team bonding trip. You know, the team will be in Belfast for a week. You know, they'll do Dublin for a day and then move to, to Belfast. Uh, the team stays at the Europa, which is a historic hotel in Northern Ireland. You know, the most bombed hotel, which is a kind of yeah. unique fact. So it's a, it's a great trip. We have a lot of alumni going. We have a lot of uh, supporters going. So there'll be a lot of UMass Blue at the game, UMass Lowell The Blue. parking lot at, at Logan Airport will be packed with cars. So uh, <laughs> yeah, look, for, don't, don't look for those Riverhawk stickers, weekend, right? Yeah. <laughs> But it's a, it's a great trip for the team, a real chance to build, yeah. build some momentum. We won the first tournament um, when we were over there. 
We're looking to go back and win it again. You're going. I'll be on that trip, yes. Uh, that's during World Cup. It is so during World it, Cup. It, Europeans are into World Cup. I mean, you'll probably uh, I assume the taverns the will be pretty full. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> In regards to World Cup, uh, is UMass going to do anything for World Cup? Are they going to have so screens we, up for the students to watch? Well, a lot USA? of the games will happen during the Thanksgiving break. Um, so, so the students go home for, for Thanksgiving, okay. largely. Um, right. But it starts November 21st, Correct. World Cup. And this is soccer. I'm sorry in case we get... Uh, uh, it should have happened this summer while I was in Europe because that's when it usually does happen, but it's in Qatar. And because it's in Qatar, it's it's cooler in November. Yeah, you don't want to play those games in the 120 yeah, degree yeah. heat. Well, they were talking about the, uh, eight years ago when they got it. Oh, we're going to have air conditioned stadiums and so forth. Somehow it didn't work out. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. So okay, um, you uh, you have you told me something. You have military night. Uh, yeah, we have military appreciation night coming up on November fifth when we play Vermont. Uh, that game's exciting because. We have a number of tributes throughout the night for, for both active duty and veterans. Uh, we ask all members to stand. We, throughout the game, we play the branch songs for each of the branches of the military. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but the best part is, obviously, we I have, don't stand. You don't stand? No. no. <laughs> no. <You're> <laughs> <laughs> but we do have complimentary admission for all active duty and retired uh, military service personnel and their families that night. So it's just okay. show up at the box office. Show either your active duty card or proof of service. Or the VA card, if yeah. you have a VA and, card. And that'll and get complimentary card. admission. Yeah, so um, it's November 5th. It's Vermont. It's a Saturday. The game is at 6.05 p.m. Um, you know, get your VA card or your military card. Uh, uh, so... Just bring it to the and they'll, yep. and they'll. What about if you have a family? I mean, they yep. have to family, pay. Nope, family we include as well. Oh, the family and yep. children, grandchildren right. too. Right. The whole, the whole nine yards. You know, if somebody rolls in with their with their uh, VW ba van with fourteen people, we might run into a situation. <laughs> but we we make sure we take care of the family. Oh, well. okay, good. So I mean, bring your gra grandchildren to the game. I mean, bring your children to the game. I mean, it doesn't hurt. I mean. It's a hockey game. The kids might like it. I'm sure they'll like it. If oh, for sure. Children. And, are you, are and you we kidding? offer really, there's, there's complimentary tickets for veterans all season long through a program called VetTix.com. Uh, Is it just veterans? That one's just veterans, um, but okay. they offer it through that website. And it's not just UMass Lowell. There's tickets to all sorts of events. It's a okay. wonderful site. They do great things. Okay. If an adult, uh, let's say, explain where the location is. And if an adult wants to go, tickets. Yeah, so for, for tickets, uh, we're at the Sanga Center. The box office is at the Sanga okay. Center. In Lowell, Mass. In Lowell, yep. And you can go to goriverhawks.com or the thesongacenter.com for tickets yeah. or just walk up on the day of the game. Uh, all options are available. Tickets start at 18 run to $25 at regular prices. You save down to $10 on group tickets. And season tickets save you nearly 50% off the box office break right. price. So. so you're telling me basically if I'm a veteran, I could walk in Show my card. On November 5th, yes. On November 5th. Correct. But no other day. Correct. Uh, uh, on the other days, you want to try to check out vet ticks and make sure, because we put an allotment in for each game. Okay. Um, and there's a chance to grab those tickets each night. Okay. I've, I've but just, season tickets, if you're a veteran and you have season tickets, uh, uh, let me look at this uh, paperwork that I, uh, if you're a veteran, uh, it's $195 for how many games? Uh, so 18 games. 18 games, which is not bad. No, no. When you do out the math, I think it comes out to, to nearly 61%, 62% off box. And they, John, they would call you in regards to? Um, they can call me. I'll, I'll help them, or they can do it or, right on the website. But, well, I mean, but if they want to see where their seats are, oh, some yeah, people absolutely. like it over the glass. Absolutely. Some people like it up front, yep. that type of thing. So you'd show them around and, yep. and let them yep. we, see. We, what, have, we have people come in all the time. We'll show them, okay, this is this seat's available or this seat's available. Most people like to be above the glass just from a viewing standpoint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, that's um, where I... I that's generally, where row, row 10 and up is where yeah. you want to be. Okay. I mean, some people like, because they have children... They yep, want you want to be down, down banging on the glass. Bang on the glass. <laughs> <laughs> so you're playing um, Miami, Ohio, Anchorage, Alaska. They're playing here. Then, uh, you know, all the way to the end of February, you're playing. And then Hockey East quarterfinals. Hopefully, that will be Lowell. You usually, hope, you know, so the top, usually they'll, they, the top four teams host a home playoff game in the, uh, or get a bye and host on okay. Saturday. The fifth seed gets a bye but doesn't host. 
and then seeds six, seven, and eight, they host on Wednesday. So Well, you're expected to come in fifth, so maybe you can. You know, that's fourth. what the coaches project. Yeah. We, we, we generally like to, to take those for what they're worth. <laughs> good point, good point. And then the semifinals would be in Boston Sem at the correct. Boston correct. Garden in the Hockey East championship. Uh, championship. And then hopefully uh, the Frozen oh, Four. Yeah, so each of the last two seasons, the Riverhawks have lost to the eventual national champion in our last game. We lost to good point. UMass two years ago. Yep. Last year we were out in the NCAA tournament. We got we Denver. were sent to the Denver Regional. Yeah. We played Denver in Denver, and uh, we, we came up just short. We lost by a goal. Uh, Denver came to Boston and was the eventual Frozen Four national champion. So yeah. there's only 63 uh, college hockey teams. So there's a real chance for our program to be a national champion at the D1 level. And, you know, that's our goal, to be yeah. a Division One national champion, to bring that championship to Lowell. And, you know, we're, not, we're, we're hoping to flip the script and, and have somebody else. We'll, we'll eventually do it, become yeah. national champion, NCAA national champion. Yes, That's what I'd like to hear. It's ten, 10-year ten anniversary of when we last went to the Frozen Four, uh, which was in Pittsburgh with uh, Connor Hellebuck leading the way. Yeah, I, re I remember that. I was there. I remember that whole uh, uh, scene. Um, I want to ask you something uh, that's happening in Lowell in regards to the Lowell Spinners. Mm -hmm. um, you were involved with, with the Lowell Spinners at one time in your career, right? Correct, yeah. So I spent 10 seasons with the Lowell Spinners yeah, uh, professionally. Uh, yeah, 10 seasons. So tell me what the story is. Uh, uh, are they coming back or what's the story uh, with the stadium? Yeah, uh, so. Lasher Stadium, which is in Lowell, mm -hmm. uh, right next door. It's tough. Parking is tough there, but go ahead. Yeah, so I mean, the. When COVID happened, the spinner season was eliminated, and coming out of COVID, Major League Baseball eliminated short season baseball in the New York Penn League, which is where the spinners existed. Yeah, um, New so York Penn League was in uh, established in 1935. I was disappointed to see it go because it, it had a history. For sure. So yeah. um, the city, you know, our baseball team, the UMass Lowell Riverhawks, have played their seasons there since, but we've been the only tenant. Um, so the city made an agreement with the university to sell. Um, the Lasher Ballpark, or Lasher Stadium rather, to the UMass Building Association. Um, and it's going to be now developed. It's going to immediately, I think the deal will be official in November, and there's immediate plans November to... November uh, 2022. Correct. Right. Immediate plans to, to kind of make some instant upgrades, some things that have been neglected over the last three years. Like what? What are they talking about? They're talking about $5 million of instant upgrades. I mean, what's, what's So a lot, I mean, essentially the ballpark has been not neglected, but empty for three years. Yeah. Um, so a lot of day-to-day -day maintenance has been overseen. Plus now uh, you have to change the lights in regards to the night lights. The lights are brand new. Uh, lights oh, got lights done just before, oh, okay. just before COVID. So oh, okay. uh, one of the biggest changes I think you'll see in the near future will be turf. I think it's important to get turf into the Lasher Park because A. Versus our, grass. Our baseball team plays March, April, May. Not exactly known for the best weather yeah, in New exactly. England. That's a good Tur point. Turf's a game changer. Yeah. You can play on, it, it on any weather circumstances. I mean, uh, can and bounce, the ball can bounce any way. <laughs> it's come a long way. Difference. It really yeah. has come a long way. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's very close to what natural grass is now. And then it would also allow you to have a lot more access in terms of who's the other tenant in the ballpark. Is there a, another professional baseball team in there? Is there a collegiate summer league team, what, wh who else? Well, they're talking about, about taking a team out of what, the South or something, what was that, what are those So, the, I mean, there's teams? been a lot of rumors and I haven't been a part of many of yeah, those, yeah, but yeah. you know, originally the rumor was potentially the Salem Red Sox the Salem would migrate Reds. up. Were they in, in North Carolina? They are in Salem, Virginia. Salem, Virginia, okay. Yeah, so that would be an A-ball team, um, but you know, I think there's a lot of, a lot of hurdles. Well, that, if it was A-ball and it's not short season, that means it would start in April, College is going on. The, UMass Lowell is in session. You have to be very creative with and, schedule. And then, yeah, and then you would have to, uh, what is it, uh, September? It would, it, it would end sometime Correct. in the mid-September, end September. So that's kind of, you know, parking, et cetera, at the university. Parking and our, our baseball schedule. Yeah. You know, our baseball team practices, our baseball team plays. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spring, so a lot of challenges there, but it's exciting to see what the next step is for Alasha Park. Uh, it's been it's been, you know, depressing as somebody who spent 10 years at that ballpark yeah. driving by it and seeing it empty all summer. So I'm excited to see what, what the future holds yeah. for it. No, I mean, it's a great ballpark. I mean, you know, it, 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 it well designed. I mean, uh, if, you, if you go uh, double A or something, you'd have to extend uh, the seating uh, out there in uh, left field. So the, origi the, the way the park was originally built was so that if it did become a double A at the time, there were seat minimum requirements that you could add a layer on top. So I don't think you have the ability to really extend seats either left or right field just because